About four days ago, I made a video saying the Dino Vote is back and you go check out the submissions page. But today we're going to be talking about the top 10 creatures in the submission for the upcoming vote. I'm going to look at each one in detail and you can choose yourself which one you are going to vote for. Before we get to that though, make sure the like button, subscribe to become a human being on the way to 10,000 subscribers. Appreciate all of you. Let's get into this. So all you need to do is go to survivethearc.com and go over to creature submission tab with under the forums. And that will give you the list of creatures that have been submitted. Now there's a lot. We've got loads of pages. Uh, but we're just going to go off the most voted. So we're going to filter this by most voted. And here we can see we have got quite a few high voted creatures straight off the bat. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at each one, describe them, see what we think is the favourites and then go on from there. The first one is the giant bison, which looks like this. This, it's a big American bison, I believe. So in this, it describes how the suggestions, so as these are the creature submissions, it shows how they want the creatures to be within Ark. This isn't a guaranteed thing. So Ark may pull some of the ideas from this, but most of the time it just means that uh, it's just their idea. So the wild bison will be tra traveling in massive herds for greater pastures. With their massive pairs of horns, they are known to be aggressive chargers and are capable of goring any predator willing to challenge them, including wolves and bears. Their large bodies are capable of withstanding the harsher winters with their ever-growing pelts, making them durable enough to resist freezing to death. So straight off the bat there, you think these creatures could be good for, uh, they've got a bleed effect, they've got a charge uh, effect, and they've got, uh, for example, maybe help you survive through rag snow. So let's talk about them being domesticated. So in this creator's eyes, once they are tamed, this of course unfortunately attracts every now and then random predators who want to rage your livestock and eat them all. The milk produced by the females gives any baby animal being raised a quite needed boost. Potentially it can be warmed up in a cooking pot for a special buff against the cold weather. With their hulking bodies they offer extra warmth and can carry weight much like modern ox. Like modern cattle their feces is much more potent fertilizer often referred to as cow pie that gives crops a boost of extra harvest that are the domesticated things that this guy wants for the bison now, there's a lot more to talk about this but we're gonna leave it there because this video is gonna be long enough as it is so that is the bison and currently the number one voted in the post with over a hundred more votes than the second place which is insane because no one wants to join by some well uh, clearly 609 people do in position number two it is the titanoceratops which is one that i actually spoke about within the creature submission video that i made a few days ago it is classified as the siege beast and anti giga so straight off the bat this guy goes into the abilities its main two damage abilities are dealing high amounts of damage to both creatures and higher drag weight scaling up as the drag weight scales and dealing high damage to gates and doors up to metal behemoth gates the trade-off for dealing damage to metal is that it must consume raw metal <laughs> <laughs> Around 5 to 10 metal per 5 seconds. It allows for a 30 second window to damage metal and has a cooldown that lasts around a minute. Though the stance change makes it slower as a trade off similar to the Magmasaurus smelting ability minus the smelting. While it does mediocre damage to metal structures, in this state it does high amounts of damage to doors and dino gates, making it efficient battering ram as for the giga slaying ability it will be able to resist its gnash and deal higher damage to it than other creatures due to its increased drag rate damage it also particularly well protected from the front having a high damage resistance in both the frills and the legs this paired with the anti-bleed effect and the high health makes it a great defense against arc's largest and deadliest theropod its other prime function will be acting as a terror shield for large dinos up to the height of a rex and is great for efficiently taking huge amounts of bullets and explosives with little damage. In addition, when multiple titanoceratops are near, they gain a herd buff that increases the damage resistance and gives a buff to nearby saddleless dinos. It however does not affect the dinos that are natural armor like the reapers and the shadow main. And he also goes on to talk about how he wants them to be resistant to all traps so you can't trap them, spike walls won't affect them and explosive placed on the floor beneath them will also 
do less damage. He also wants a herd bonus. What's the weaknesses of having the Titan, the Titanoceratops? Well, basically, it is going to be extremely powerful and it's got to have some drawbacks. It can only fit through Behemoth Gates. Its turn radius is extremely slow, so smaller agile creatures can keep running around it. It's a slow swimmer. The backside is fairly unprotected, therefore a little bit more squishy. The rider perched on a high saddle is vulnerable to being grappled by flyers or sniper fire. And it's going to be weak against fire weapons, flamethrowers, fire arrows, wyverns, and the fire pitch catapult. So what's your thoughts? Do you want the Titanoceratops as your new creature coming to Fajordo? Let me know down below. Like I said, this guy is a whole hundred votes behind first place. But don't worry though, whoever wins out these creature submissions will go into their own category for the vote. So don't worry about it. We still got a lot. The Karchar. Now this was the runner-up last time around. Everybody wanted this. I don't have to describe it too much. It's basically a Rex. It's it's a creature between a Rex and a Giga, a new Apex Predator, which is equally as powerful as a Giga, but slightly smaller, a little bit more, uh, a little less beefy. Uh, basically just an all-round beast of a creature. Now the guy hasn't added too much details. He has got the dossier from last time, and it's got the size of the teeth. And it's also got some really cool information there. But basically, it's just a bigger Rex, a smaller Giga, it's, it's a creature to fill that that in-between gap. That is currently sitting in third place with nearly 150 less volts. So, um, yeah, make sure you check that guy out if you want that one. The Armadillo Suchus is the Wrecking Ball creature. Nice little diagram here for a tether to grapple it to get it some momentum to break stuff. It can go over all the terrains. It's gone through a tree down into the water. Or you can go across the water. Okay, that's pretty cool. Roll in any direction, even jump while rolling. This is the size difference. So, but what about the Armadillo Sutures? What can it actually do? The Armadillo Sutures is a burly monster who loves seeing structures go boom by grappling onto a faraway object with its tongue. That's actually pretty cool. It turns into a wrecking ball and pivots its way forward, smashing down anything in its path with brutal force. The Swinging Wrecking Ball attack also works on creatures. Very, very cool. A nice little diagram for him here. <laughs> so you can roll and grapple across the map. It's basically a really fast uh, ground mount, I'd say. And it can also skim across the surface of the water. What's it weak to? Fire. It is weak to fire. Explosives can scare a rolling armadillo sutures and force it out of its bomb form. The net gun, for obvious reasons. And two armadillo suits crashed into each other will stun them both. Does this creature sound like a creature that you want? Well, make sure to vote for it. It's currently in fourth place with 327 votes, almost half the amount of votes as the giant bison. The Rhineo Rafa, I think. The Rhineo Natha? I think that's how you pronounce it. I, this is, uh, yeah, this is a butcher of one. So the idea of this one is to add a almost original style creature, as they were stated that. Bug type creatures are almost forgotten within Ark. It's a flying mount and once it's tamed it turns into an end game mount. So basically this is the oldest, in real life this is the oldest insect known for the modern science and most of it's still a mystery. Research in order to adopt it properly and it's got like an actual picture which you turn into this. I mean that's, I mean, that's pretty damn accurate. It's yet unknown if it was an insect. So it's got some amber looking parts on it which give it a sort of sky fi look and fancy look but it's also a direct like reference to it being in previous fossils within Jurassic Park's amber. It's an air water mount. So it has speed for both flying and swimming. And it's supposed to excel in fighting, traveling and carrying. Its weight stat is higher than the Wyverns, but lower than an Argentavis or a Quetzal. Its speed is pretty average while walking or running. A heavy carrier, and as you can see here, it's got a picture of either a Raptor and a Anki under its arms or a big Rex. Or a shark. So if it's a smaller creature, you can pick up two or big creatures. The eye spots on its wings resemble the Tuso, which makes it ignored by all, all water creatures unless attacked. That's pretty useful. And there's a nice little picture of it looking like a Tuso in the water. That's actually very smart. Now there's quite a few of these right here. It goes on for a while. You've got like a motorbike saddle on it. It looks very cool. Um, honestly, this one has probably got the most effort in, and I would vote for this one just purely because it has the most effort. 
Seriously, this guy's put so much effort into it. There's loads of pages on there for you to go and have a look at. But I'm just doing a quick overlook on that one. It's a bug creature that can fly, swim, carry uh, big stuff or two small things. Uh, it looks like an all-round uh, traveling mount. And that's basically in spot number five. We're going to look at the last two and then we're going to call that a video. So we've got the Desmondus Dracula, a giant vampire bat. I mean, the picture of this looks insane, and I'd be down for that. This creature has been designed for PvP. Basically, what will happen is that at the night time, this guy will have low stamina drain. It'll be extremely fast. Its maneuverability will be great. However, in the daytime, it'll be a lot slower, sluggish, stamina will drain quicker. It's going to have night vision and echo location, which allows you to see creatures or people nearby and around corners, basically giving you perfect vision. Again, great for that night time. A very stealthy creature, massive by the looks of it, as you can see in the picture right here, and compared to the human, absolutely massive, which it looks like a, a small wyvern there, which is insane. As a very quick look at this guy, the Desmondus. If you want to see this one, make sure to vote for it. Okay, and the final one that we're going to be talking about today, and in place 7 at the moment, is the Sivatherium. I don't know if I'm going to say that correctly, but it's the prehistoric giraffe. And this creature basically looks like this. A nice little prehistoric giraffe there. Nice, uh, little, nice little against Homo sapiens right there. So the reason for submitting this is that Ark lacks a prehistoric giraffe. And when they're domesticated, by the sounds of it, you domesticate them with sap. They have a love for sap. Once tamed, its large horns provide huge utility for raids, turning them into a living catapult, able to hurl boulders and jars of pitch to enemy bases. They have good run speed for long distance without consuming too much stam, and they can carry large loads for raids and harvesting. You got a left click for a horn slam, a right click for a stomp, C key for the catapult mold. Add other abilities include spin without consuming steam, high weight, gather saps from trees, and vomit act as spoiled meat substitute. To tame it, you let it lick sap out of your infant, and a level saddle will be level 30. So that is a prehistoric giraffe, and that is everything from the creature submission page, or the top seven at least. But after that, it's just the too low to even be in the running, so there's no point. But I mean, if you want to go check it out, you can. There's a ton of creature submissions. Go and check it out. They're really awesome. That is the video. That's what's up for the vote. Let's see how many of these will make it into the final vote. Thank you for watching. My name is B&E. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a fantastic day. Peace.